France. Known for its fantastic cheese and wine, who doesn't want to go on holiday here? In EU4 though, it's not the friendliest place, and its baguette shaped swords can actually do quite a lot of damage to your nation if you're not careful. Is this historically accurate though? In this video therefore, I want to ask the question whether France is historically accurate with a nation having many vassals, and why is France so decentralised in game during this time period? Now I must admit, obviously France in E4 isn't going to be 100% historically accurate, but out of all the E4 regions, I would say this is one of the regions I would least add to. France wasn't particularly great in E4 before the 1.3 update, and in fact France was definitely not accurate before this update. But nowadays, France has a lot more vassals, and they've been given as much flavour as possible given the limitations of the game. You can see the difference of France between the two updates here. Just look at that France. This old E4 patch is definitely not showing just how decentralised France was. I also have a bit of an E4 quiz for you. Can you name all five of these French nations? One of them may be a bit unfamiliar to you. Write down the five nations in the comments so I can see who's got it right. Also, have you ever wanted to go on a nice holiday trip to Ulm? Well, at 100,000 subscribers, we're going to have an Ulm meetup. So if you want to see that happen, make sure to subscribe. Right, let's get into the video. So starting with France, what is exactly missing in this country? Using the Voltaire's Nightmare mod, which tries to be historically accurate, we can compare the amount of vassals France has in E4 in comparison to historical reality. In E4, France has a total of 5 vassals, whereas in Voltaire's Nightmare, France has a total of 21 vassals. Now obviously, take Voltaire's Nightmare with a pinch of salt, as I know the map is missing two microstates, one between the border of Scotland and England, known as the Debatable Lands, and the other being a microstate on the Portuguese-Spanish border just here. Although these microstates are very irrelevant anyway, speaking to someone who studied this area, he reckons that historically, there's more than around 50 vassals in France, which just goes to show how difficult it would be to add more than around 50 vassals in France. I think historically, the amount of vassals within France gives you a scale of just how decentralised and vast it was. The French king in the north struggled to exert control over his French vassals around the nation. Sadly, we can't go through 17 different vassals that could be added in EE4, so I'll just go through some of the most interesting ones and give you an insight into some interesting small vassals. The first obscure vassal we're going to talk about is Albret, just located here. I could only find a small paragraph about this place, but Charles II of Albret was a French administrator and soldier. When his father was killed in the Battle of Agincourt, he built up a keen alliance with the armed magnat faction and supported the French king. He helped Joan of Arc with the French campaigns and was awarded sufficiently being given lands. Not much is known about him apart from this, but when he died in 1470, his grandson took the throne, and he was known as Alain the Great, and was one of the most powerful French nobles in the region, and took an active part in the Mad War. The next vassal I want to talk about is the County of Ou. This is led by Charles of Artois. His father was an energetic soldier, and after a life of crusading, he became a constable to the king. Charles, on the other hand, didn't have such an adventurous life, and was imprisoned for 20 years after the Battle of Agincourt. Around the time of E4, he was actively supporting the king and helped the French King Louis against some rebellious vassals. The final French vassal I want to talk about is Margaret of Valois, who oversaw the county of Virtus. She had an interesting life with her father being murdered on the streets of Paris and had very close connections to the King of France, but when her husband died in 1434, she became widowed and turned to her faith for comfort. She is best known for something called the Book of Hours, and it was produced for her, and we can see this illustration of her praying. Now, I hope me going through some of these interesting vassals that aren't in E4 gives you an idea that these people were important in France, but if we added them into E4 and made the game more historically accurate, then we'd get a game more around Crusader Kings 3, which is based on characters and not on the nation. Not so much is known about these obscure vassals as well, with a few lines written about them, and they tended to be side pieces in the main story of France. Should France have more vassals added that you can think of? Let me know in the comments. Moving on to the nation of Brittany just next to France, we see in game they are an independent country with a lot of interesting campaigns you can have with them. In Voltaire's Nightmare, the petty kingdom of Brittany is represented as having three vassals under them, which are Leon, 
Pentev, and Naonet. I wonder if I mispronounced those. The leader of Brittany at this time, Francis, was actually quite ruthless, and it was reported that he had his brother, Gilles, thrown into prison and put for death for allegedly spying for the English. Looking into one of the female vassals, Baroness Nicole de Chatillon, she actually has quite an interesting family history, going back to the Breton War of Succession. Her ancestor John signed a treaty and denounced his claim to the Duchy of Brittany. I actually think it would be quite cool to have this vassal in game, given the fact Nicole had a claim to the Brittany throne at the start of E4. In 1480, she sold her Brittany claim to Louis of France. Therefore, I think some events in Brittany surrounding this disputed succession would be quite interesting to have in game. What do you guys think though? Let me know in the comments. The next nation I want to talk about is Provence. In E4, their country is split into three parts which are two provinces in the southeast of France, the province of Anjou to the east of Brittany, and the province of Valois, west of Lorraine. While a lot of these E4 leaders are quite forgettable, good King René of Provence is not. His liking for the pleasures of life was equalled only by his fondness for the arts. René of Anjou left quite a unique impression in the hearts of the counties he governed. Whether they praised or criticised him, nobody remained indifferent to this highly colourful figure. What I'm a little confused about is in E4, Provence is not a vassal of France, even though we know good King René pledged his loyalty to the French throne. Here's a painting of him doing just that. In Voltaire's Nightmare, we can see good King René as both a vassal of France in Anjou and ruling his own independent kingdom of Provence. So I guess potentially this is the right balance to have, and he definitely did act in his own interests. What do you guys think though? Let me know in the comments. The last county I want to talk about is the County of Orange, which we can see right here next to the Papal State Province. Now out of all the small vassals, why do I think the County of Orange might be worth adding into the E4 base game? I actually believe the lead at the time, Louis II, is a really fascinating character, and he was nicknamed for good. Louis was very ambitious, and he tried to establish his authority in the French territory north of him, but failed. He was also a bit of a player, and sometimes express loyalty towards the King of France, and at other times towards the German Emperor or the Duke of Burgundy. In the end, nobody really trusted him. Having a character like this in game might be good for a region, and I'm certainly sure people would love to play as this county with this politically astute leader. So there you have it guys, definitely an accurate region in the E4. And yet, there are still things Paradox can add to this region. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and make sure to subscribe for more map and accuracy videos. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye for now. Shout out to our Patreons. Jado52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76, and Xiaomi. Your support means a lot, guys.